and this is really what I wanted to get to, because I really want to help kind of set up what we're doing after this coming Tuesday, all right? Bear with me for a second. We're going to do that year 5780 this Tuesday, two days from now. The following week, there's no Tuesday service because Wednesday is when Cheon is going to be here. So we don't want to be out two nights in a row, okay? The following week, we're going to start possessing your vessel, okay? We're going to do six weeks of that. And here's, here's the thinking behind it. The holidays are coming. Some of you have some dysfunctional stuff going on at the holidays, right? When you're dealing with family. <laughs> God wants to teach you a lesson through your family. Amen? Boy, you see how you don't get any amens about that. That's why it's risk. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. So we're going to give you five weeks, five Tuesdays in a row, and then we're going to break for the week of Thanksgiving so you can apply what you're learning. And then we'll have one week after so you could come in and lick your wounds and we can pray for you. <laughs> and I don't mean to make it worse than it is because I know a lot of you have amazing families. I, I do know that. I really do. It's, you know, it's just things that you might have been avoiding and now all of a sudden you can't avoid it anymore. And it's not like politics is a, an upsetting conversation. Jesus, help us. Jesus, help us. From the uncle at the Thanksgiving table that wants to just ruin the meal. See why you need Holy Ghost. you got to be listening closely. Now, look, it's way bigger than that, right? Possessing your vessel is way bigger than that. I, I'm just curious. How many here have never taken the class here? You don't know what we're talking about. Could you lift them high for a minute? Yeah, see, that's what's happened. We haven't done it in a while, so there's quite a few people that might hear us kind of casually throw out a term like parental inversion. I had never heard that until I studied this material. Bitter root judgments. I had never heard that before we studied this material. I, I kind of could grasp the concept from here in the title, but we're going to unpack some of those things and, and help you, especially help you understand the culture of King of Kings because we're really about trying to change lives. Whether they come to our church or not, if they come to the class, they don't have to be a member of our church to come to the class. Um, six weeks is only a small par portion, really, to be honest, of, of all the material, but it's what we're going to do. So I just think even if you've come before, come again. Bring a friend, like they were saying. If you can go through the class for the six weeks with somebody so you have somebody to pray with along the way, that would really help as well. So that's where this portion of Scripture comes from. It's whenever anyone turns to the Lord, what happens? Can you see it? That was not very emotional. When everyone turns, I'm sorry. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the that's right. I can see again. I'm not bound by drugs anymore. I'm not drawn to pornography anymore. The veil's been taken away. I see the light. That's where it came from. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. And no more in darkness. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. That's what happens, right? Didn't you find that when you were a new Christian? Things that you used to be involved in, the Lord, the, with the Lord just took the veil off your eyes and showed you how dark it was. And all of a sudden, you didn't even want to do that thing anymore. So that's what happens. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, that veil that he's been talking about the last few verses from Moses, remember? That veil gets taken away. And that happened to Paul. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory. See, so this glory was fading on Moses. This glory on you is ever-increasing for the rest of your life. You are being transformed into a Jewish carpenter. <laughs> Trying to keep you awake. You're being transformed into the image of Christ in the way he made you to be. You're not going to look like him except on the inside. Your spirit is going to be reformed into him. Then you reach a point where you can never be transformed anymore. No. <laughs> no. You're always going to have something else that he could be working on in your life to be more like him. That's exciting. That shouldn't be discouraging. It's like, good, no matter what I can do, there's more that I can do to be like him until we're with him forever. Remember, Adam and Eve had perfect relationship with God in the garden. We don't. 
but we have Holy Spirit. So we have a taste. We have a, what the Bible calls a down payment of what the Holy Spirit's like. But when he comes back, we're going to have what Adam and Eve had in the garden. You believe that? You're not just sitting on a cloud playing a harp. You're ruling and reigning forever with Christ. What he meant for Adam and Eve is what we're going to have. That should get you excited. Go to the next one, please. So this is the book that we use, and I encourage you if you can go online and, and get it at, at Amazon.com. It's one of four. It's well written. We're not going to do the whole thing in six weeks, but it's a good like little measuring stick for you to, to have some material if you want to read on it. We'll have other things that you can listen to along the way. But I love this little commentary quote. Moses beheld the glory of God and his face, what? Reflected God's glory. New Testament believers, how many of those do we have? Behold the glory of God and are transformed into that glory. So you're not just reflecting it, you're becoming it. It's hard to argue with your wife when you know that about them, isn't it? <laughs> you need more transformation, honey. So do you, dear. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Good goal, isn't it? Let's go to the next one, please. All right, so um, I don't have a whole lot more. Doing good? Okay. Yeah, decent on time. I love this. First Thessalonians 4. This is where we came up with the name of the course, which is called Possessing Your Vessel. Okay, it's right out of First Thessalonians 4. For this is the will of God. What? All right, that's a powerful little verse, isn't it? Put your name in there, Marianne. This is the will of God. Your sanctification. Peter, your sanctification. What does that mean? A, a, a process of starting out unholy and moving more towards that transforming power of God so that I'm more like him. Right? That's the transformation that takes place through this process of sanctification. What religion did was turn it into outward appearance and the way we dress and girls can't wear makeup and, you know, all the rules that we, so, that we see with legalism. And God is saying, no, you got to be like me. You got to be willing to jump off that diving board and know that God's going to fill the pool on the way down. It doesn't, uh, God is too big to lock them up into certain constants and variables like you, we he's got way more variables than constants that doesn't change the power of the word of god I'm not watering down the word but jesus handled situations differently depending on the situation right remember when he the woman was thrown down at his feet she was caught in adultery they thought they had him cold and he knelt down and started drawing he didn't say anything i wonder why heard lots of speculation about that my theory is he was getting instructions from the father but they were only coming in little pieces, and he was writing them down. And, and that's how he wants us all to live on a regular basis. You walk into a situation, you don't know what to do. you got to pause. And don't just react. Don't let your emotions take over. You pause and pray, Lord, help me here. I, I don't know what to do. Or I know what I could do, but is that what you want me to do? And you start relying on your own thing, and it's like, yeah, maybe it was a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea.